All right, hey guys, welcome back to the Cardo's Auto Detailing YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be doing an engine detail on my Ford F-150. It's a van, which will carry all my detailing supplies. However, as you could see, uh, this engine is really dirty. As you could see here, we got some, some minor water spotting. We got some grease, dust, grime. We got some leaves here in the, on the intake. Uh, lots of work to do here. Uh, I intentionally left this van to get dirty for an excessive period of time. Uh, so uh, this is going to be a perfect opportunity to demonstrate to you guys um, how I do an engine detail uh, in the safest way possible, but also giving promising results. Now before we get started with this video, I do want to give off some disclaimers. Now this type of engine detail is not intended for um, show car results. This is just to get the grease, grime, dust out of the way. So if you want to get that um, show quality results, you might want to look elsewhere because the focus of this video is to get as much as the grease and grime, dirt, everything out of the way. So that way we can dress the engine so that way it looks in good condition. There are some things you want to keep in mind before you do an engine detail yourself is that you want to make sure that your engine is watertight. Right, so usually vehicles with made within the last, uh, I don't know, 10 to 15 years, um, you, you would be perfectly fine with the process I'm going to do. But if your car is older than 10 to 15 years, uh, you might want to be very cautious as to how you're going to spray water, spray the chemicals, apply the dressing, et cetera, because the connections, uh, for instance, like right here, you got some wires, some intakes, some hose clamps, and all that stuff. Usually this stuff loosens up through time, so you do not want to be applying too much product or overworking a product into those areas because you do not want to be damaging anything. Another thing to keep in mind is the area of your alternator. So as you can see in my engine right here, you guys can see that right there. This giant piece is an alternator. I'll try to, I'll, I'll put a picture right here, a couple examples so you guys can see what an alternator is. Um, you just wanna make sure you don't splash too much water on it. I mean, use common sense. Don't don't flood this entire engine with water or cleaners or anything because what the last thing you want to do is short your um, alternator which will pretty much kill the car and you'll have to get that replaced maintenance and etc and while we're at it um, one other thing to keep in mind is uh, the battery location now I've seen some detailers um, disconnect the battery or just keep the battery in place uh, me personally I like to keep the battery in place because you got some vehicles, uh, which I actually detailed not too long ago, where if you disconnect the battery, um, it will actually reset, depending on the vehicle, it will reset the entire center console uh, computer. So what I mean by that is that if you got a vehicle that has a touchscreen display and you see it's got all those fancy um, settings for Bluetooth, connections, and all that stuff, very likely if you disconnect the battery it's going to factory reset that entire thing so any presets like selected radio stations connected devices and other plugins all of that will be reset so make sure to inform the client or keep that in mind yourself if you plan on disconnecting the battery and finally uh make sure that the engine is cool to the touch you do not ever want to work on a hot engine not only is it uh, pretty risky for yourself, you don't want to burn yourself, um, but also the chemicals will dry up really quickly. So you're going to have to be wasting more product and time just to clean all that mess if it does dry up on you. So always make sure you are working on an engine that is cool to the touch, that you can touch it, no problem, and that way uh, you will remain safe. And like I said at the beginning of the video, this is not intended for show car results. You're probably gonna have to look elsewhere for that. This video is mostly focused on getting rid of as much dirt as possible while making the engine look brand new. If you are interested in a car engine detail, make sure to check this video out so that way you can have some certain expectations to be made when you go out to find a detailer of your choice. So if you guys are a car professional or a car enthusiast, make sure to stick around so that way you get to learn some tips and tricks, maybe some new things you could try out on your own detail. So let's get straight into it. Through years of use and neglect, 
This van had collected enough grime and dirt so I can show you guys how I do an engine detail. This isn't to get show car results, but rather to clean the engine from the ice soaring gunk laying on the surface and to protect it with a dressing so it remains clean and presentable for time to come. For my detailers and car enthusiasts, I will walk you through the chemicals, tools, and equipment I use so you can try this out yourself and maybe learn a thing or two. I will also go over some precautions and expectations that should be made before attempting to do a clean on an engine. This video is packed with lots of information, so grab a couple of drinks, some snacks, and enjoy the video. Now surprisingly, there isn't a lot of tools needed to do a deep clean for the engine. Just a water source, a quality degreaser, a dressing, and a couple of towels and brushes, and off you go. Starting off is a degreaser. I like to use SuperClean 4 to 1 because it has enough grease cutting capabilities for an engine with lots of contaminants. A pump sprayer with a wand attached makes the process more precise and efficient since the wand can reach in tight areas where a spray bottle couldn't. The output is consistent with very little downtime compared to a spray bottle because you don't have to squeeze the trigger every time you want to spray the product, which would tire your hands if you are doing this as a business or servicing a lot of vehicles. Next up are some synthetic detail brushes and wheel brushes. The detail brushes will help agitate the cleaner in the more intricate areas, while the wheel brushes will help deep clean areas where your hand might not fit. Having a variety of brushes with different sizes is important because relying on one tool to do it all will not be efficient nor will it give you effective results. Following after that is a soft fender brush. Even though this hood wasn't that large, the brush's length will help agitate the cleaner without having to stretch a lot or lean on the vehicle. For the intricate areas, it could be followed up with the same detail brushes that are used for the engine. After cleaning the engine, a dressing will be applied to ensure that it is protected and looking in good condition. I like to use Chemical Guys VRP diluted 4 to 1 with distilled water because spraying this product ensures an even coverage, no water spotting, and it can easily be buffed off if any high spots appear. After the cleaning phase, it is a good idea to place your brushes or towels in a bucket of water with your choice of degreaser or APC. This will help loosen up any potential grease or grime that is sticking onto the fibers, so that way it makes cleaning them a lot easier. If you're a mobile detailer, make sure your bucket has a lid that can seal liquids to prevent any spills in your vehicle. Personally, I like to use a pressure washer at a safe distance. It is reliable, consistent, and efficient. However, if you're a detailer who still isn't comfortable yet with a pressure washer on an engine, you can use a pump sprayer full of distilled water. The pressure output is low, so it won't damage anything, and even though this method is more time consuming, this could still be used as a backup or would like to be as safe as possible. Finally, a leaf blower for drying and blowing off any debris. I like this blower from Ego because not only is it battery powered, but the output on this thing is insane. You can have it full blast on the exterior and adjust the output to a lower level for the engine. A powerful yet flexible blower. Starting the detail off is the blower phase. Here I use my Ego leaf blower to blast off any loose dirt, dust, or leaves that had fallen into the crevices of the engine. This helps reduce grit accumulating where you will brush and makes for a cleaner detail. It also gives your cleaner a better time to bond on the surface and actually clean the stuck on grime without having to be activated with loose contaminants. So unless your vehicle had went out muddying, to which I would just pressure wash it off at the beginning, blowing out any loose contaminants will ensure a cleaner detail both for you and the engine. Once the leaves and loose dirt had been blown off the engine, it was then followed up with a pre-rinse. I set my nozzle to a wide 40 degree and pressure washed the dirt and grime from a safe distance. I know many detailers are not yet comfortable with pressure washing an engine because of the fear of shorting the alternator or breaking an electrical wire, but with safe practices and common sense, there really isn't anything to be afraid of. Now, of course, if you are dealing with a vehicle not made within the past 15 years, you will need to take extra precautions, but typically people who get details usually have a vehicle made within this decade. So if you plan on doing an engine detail yourself, just use common sense, 
quality chemicals and safe practices. When cleaning an engine that had been neglected for a long period of time, choosing the right APC or degreaser with the proper dilution is important because this will significantly change how long you can agitate the cleaner and how effectively you can clean. Here I spray super clean diluted 4 to 1 on the hood and even though the gallon says to use full strength on engines, personally I could still get an effective clean at the 4 to 1 dilution. It's hard to see on a white surface, but at this dilution there is enough grease cutting capabilities and it foams up very nicely to ensure that the spent product can cling onto the surface for a lot longer. Here I use a soft fender brush to work the product onto the surface. As you can see from the foam turning brown, it reacts quickly with the grease. The degreaser was worked on all large surface areas on the hood, and in the more intricate areas, a synthetic detail brush was used to agitate the cleaner in the nooks and crannies. For my detailers out there, try not to over soak or over apply the cleaner on the engine insulator. Since it is a very delicate area, try to be very loose about it to avoid any damage or potential defects. Unless you are going for show car results, do not worry if some things cannot come off, such as lint or dirt, because there is not much you can do if it does get stuck. So please be wary of that for a client's vehicle or your own. Next up is the engine. I spray my degreaser all over the surfaces and let it break down the stuck on gunk. After a minute or two, I get to town with a detail brush on the more intricate upper areas and a wheelbarrow brush to get into the tighter areas where my hand wouldn't fit. Using a detail brush on most of the surfaces here is pretty effective, but if I was dealing with a vehicle with a large engine cover, I could just use a soft wheel brush and cover a larger area more efficiently. There are many tools and tricks to clean an engine, so if you're a detailer, whatever method you like is fine. Just keep an eye on, on how much time it takes for you to do it. Now if you are someone who is going to get an engine clean from a local detailer, you will need to have some expectations set in place. First, you need to understand that not everything in an engine can be cleaned 100%. Now what do I mean by that? Well if your engine has a lot of loose or exposed cables, hoses that are deep into the lower parts of the engine, and a soiled or stained engine insulator, those areas you cannot expect show car results because delicate areas like those have a higher chance of being damaged, especially on older vehicles, which can jeopardize not only the detail, but your safety when driving. Does every client need an engine detail? Of course not. But if you want to get a majority of the grease and grime removed from the engine and get it looking in good condition, then yes, seek a local detailer and talk about what needs to be cleaned. 
With the engine fully cleaned, I proceed to the protection phase, which is applying a water-based dressing to protect and dress the engine for the years to come. I've actually made a home-brewed variant of the Detail Garage's signature VRP dressing in a spray bottle diluted approximately 5 to 1 or 4 to 1, which is then generously sprayed all over the engine and left to dry. If you're a detailer, especially one that uses Detail Garage products, you might be wondering why I diluted a ready-to-use product like VRP. By diluting it in distilled water, you can turn it into a sprayable dressing which can coat an area more evenly and because I am using distilled water, there will be no water spots when it dries. Also, once the spent product dries enough, you can then wipe away any high spots that may have formed on the engine, which will not only spread the product more evenly, but leave a consistent layer of protection. Because it was hot enough outside, I didn't dry the engine with a blower and rather just let the weather do the work for me, so in the time that it dries, I move forward by applying a sprayable wet wax on the painted surfaces to add a bit of protection for the days to come. If you're a detailer, my advice is to use a simple wax because in all honesty there is no need to add a glaze, sealant, or even a ceramic coating that realistically will not be appreciated every day. Unless you work on a vehicle that will attend car shows with an open hood, of course use all the steps necessary to protect the engine bay, but to the average consumer, a simple wax is more than enough. A couple of wipe downs later and the detail is complete. I hope you guys found this video helpful if you are in the market for an engine detail or would like to try this out yourself. There are many detailers out there with different opinions about the procedure and tools to use, but at the end of the day, the objective of an engine detail is just to clean the surface. So if you are a detailer yourself, do not overthink it with a bunch of products or tools. Just keep it simple and easy so you can have an efficient yet effective result. If you are in the market for an engine detail, hopefully this video can give you an idea as to what you can expect from an engine detail. Please keep in mind about what you can and cannot be cleaned. It's not to say that we detailers cannot do it, but for your safety it is recommended that we do not clean every hose, cable, or metal frame within. Some detailers may disagree with me and are probably typing a paragraph as to why I'm wrong, but at the end of the day, every detailer has their own method, thought process, and price for engine details. No matter which detailer you find, very likely you are going to get the same results. The only difference being is how careful and gentle the detailer is with your vehicle. Now who should get an engine detail? Well, that depends. How clean do you want your car? If you're looking for show car results, well, this method's probably not for you. But if you're looking for just a simple clean that to get most of the dirt and grime off of the engine, then sure, an engine detail would be perfect for you. However, if you're trying to do this yourself, just keep in mind of all the precautions you need to take, such as the, uh, the transmitter, the battery, any types of cables that could be loose that don't have a proper seal on them. Just take the precautions needed to clean your engine properly and safely. And that is it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please leave a thumbs up. Subscribe down below if you want to see any more future content like this down the road. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and have a good time.